nok, ikke? Det er det, jeg tænkte, du skal ikke tænke om. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Silver Rudder 2023. It's absolutely great to see such a huge turnout of uh, sailors and friends and family of the Silver Rudder. Even two days before the Silver Rudder actually starts, at the official opening and Skipper's meeting is tomorrow at 1700 until 1830, and I hope to see you all back here then. Um, but the reason why we've gathered today is to see Yen B. Hansen, who is doing a presentation on how to prepare for the Silver Rudder and how to perform well, making as few mistakes as possible. Now, we'd like to thank Garmin very much for kindly sponsoring this event. Um, Garmin are there on the pier, check out their equipment, get some free support and updates on your charts from Navionics, that's why they're here. So please do use them and, uh, and once again, thanks very much for, for making this possible to the Garmin team. So I'd like to hand the microphone over to Yen, who's going to be presenting for you for about 45 minutes. Give Yen a huge round of applause, please. Thank you, thank you. Um, it's nice to see so many people around here for this, even though it's not raining. Fantastic, thanks. Um, I would tell you just a little bit why I'm, I'm here. I have uh, completed uh, seven silver wireless, and on top of that, I have raced more than 60 times around Fuen, either double-handed or fully crewed. So, and I'm also the current record holder in the medium class in my old beloved Figaro 2, a beautiful boat. Yeah. So, you might say I, I do know uh, the race area here, been here so many times. But the thing about also, uh, about experience is uh, I probably have seen all the scenarios and found all the solutions around the race court. But the price of getting older is that it seems to take longer time to dig out all your knowledge. It's just a pity. But I guess somewhere in life you will find the balance in between what you know and how to remember it. And if you ever find that balance, please tell me when it is. That would be very nice. So, 
It seems like this age stuff here, it's also, it's, it's a waste against time. And, and no matter how much a guy, uh, uh, no matter how much I practice, time tends to do the job just a little bit better. But there was a few words about me. Now we have to see about this zero here. Preparing your, your boat. That is uh, very, very important. I was here uh, last year with my, uh, my fine alias up here, my P30. And I got the boat about four or five days before the race. And I had, let's say, five, six hours on the water before that. And that is, that is not enough. That is really chaotic. Uh, but during this year, I've been sailing about 1,200 miles in the boat. So I'm a lot more prepared. And during those 1,200 miles, I have no technical breakdowns, no major errors, no nothing. So this time, I'm in for the race. And some of the stuff which is you can do, everything you can do before the race, that will help you during the race. A, a lot, and that's the cheapest point you can get. You can make sure your boat is clean in the bottom um, and, and race ready. Uh, but one thing also, when you're sailing alone, have, have some routines about how to handle your sails, how to shift your head sails, how to change spinningers, how to set the spinninger, how to retrieve your spinninger. Because when you get very, very tired, sometimes you tend to do, ah, I can do it in a smarter way. The, the, suddenly you seems to be wiser when you're tired than you when you're fresh, but that is not the case. You will make errors then. Stick, keep your routines, stick to them, no matter how tired you'll be. Um, and as, as it is, uh, this down here this is for my alias. I have in each side I have about ten lines, so there's a lot of things to be confused about. So put labels on all of those. The, these labels here, they will light up in the dark. That is very, very nice. So you don't make any mistakes taking the wrong sail up or down or release the main halyard when you were supposed to take down the spinnaker. And uh, another stuff which is really important it is to keep mark on all your lines, all your sheets. So I have, for instance, when I'm going to make a reef in the main, I open the clutch to reach the first mark, close the clutch, pull the reef line and to the mark, and then I know all is good. I don't have to look up in the sail to see if it's probably set at the tack or in the boom. Marks on the lines and everything. That will help, help you a lot. And that will cost you two kroners at the most. Uh, but it will take some time, of course. And another stuff which is also very important, if you have uh, uh, flying head sails in a furling system, it is so that the, the torsion rope in the sail has a kind of memory. So if you don't furl it the same way every time, then you will have to, uh, say, untwist the rope and then twist it again before the furl ever starts to sail. And by then you are north of Samsuri or something before that will happen. So make sure that you arrange your furling line so you have in the cockpit, you know exactly which part of the line you are going to pull. Normally, I have it in a double cleat with an upper cleat and a lower cleat. And I always have the line which I'm going to pull to furl in the sails in the upper cleat. It could be the opposite way, but it just has to be the same position every time. So don't make any mistakes on that one. So. Um, Talking about preparation, I'm um, a sailmaker. I'm not an electrician. This was my installation last year. Uh, it's not fantastic, I could say so, but that was what I could do before the race start. And it did not last the race. It lasted for some few hours, and one instrument by another started to, to, to fail. So shortly after start, I was uh, without any autopilot and got blinded more and more during the race. But I think that must be like sailing a folk boat or something like that. Um, so it's, it's really a pity with, with things go, go that wrong because all the race last year only had the, the main and gearboard. I couldn't put a spinnaker, I couldn't go to the deck and set a, 
at Jeep Zero, no, no nothing. It was first when we came to Ransos Minde for the last five miles, it's been count down a little bit, and I could raise uh, an asymmetric there. Uh, really, as I said, this won't last the race. Now I've done it more like this. This is more proper installation, all is in a watertight box, and it's all well connected now. So th this, this works. This is a proper installation, not done by me, by a professional. Yeah. So, and also a lot of stuff preparing your boat, uh, small details. Um, on the mast, I've put a cleat like this on each side of the mast, so it's much, it's much easier when you're alone to hoist the sails when you're standing beside the mast. So you can cleat it in, the, in this one, park it there, Hoist it up, park it in the cleat, go down and, and pull it. Before you load the sails, it's easy, very important that you get all the load to, uh, to the winds or to uh, spin lock or anything like that. And you can see there's a little uh, line here, a little line going in to keep the cleat open. That's a kind of security because you do not want at all cases this cleat to, be, to, to take the load. So when I know I'm not going to use the cleat here, I put this p little piece of rope in there so it doesn't catch the rope on, uh, when I do not want to do that. So, similar stuff makes your life a lot easier on board the boat. So, and also, a simple stuff here. You, you, this one you can do, you can spend half an hour just trying to organize which sails you have, which swing angles, and which uh, wind strengths you can use them. This one is a, a very, very simple one. Have it on your boat, so when you get tired, you will know wind angle 120 degrees, wind strength plus 20, you know which sail you're going to pull up, and so don't fuck it all up. So, and, and if you have more sails, put them all in, make sure you have everything noted, as, as, t as good as you can. And also, the good things, put labels on all your sail bags and on the corner of the sails. Because, again, when you're, when you're awake in the beginning of the race, no problem. You will not grab the wrong sail at that time. But uh, Saturday morning, you might be a little bit tired. You know, I have seen a lot of people hoisting the, the asymmetric in the, in the clue or in the tag. Uh, so put corn labels, all corners of the sail, and of course mark all the sail bags very, very clearly. I have on my boat, I have, uh, at the moment I have two spinnakers, and they are different in colors, so I do not grab the wrong one. Of course it's easy to see the label saying A2 or A5, but for sure I know the A2 that is blue, and the A5 is white. I do not take the wrong one by then. So. That's cool. On my figure, I had three asymmetrics, and the biggest one was a red one. So, don't don't miss up with that. So, and then there's something about uh, preparing uh, preparing you for the race. I'll come with a comment for this picture later on. But I can tell you, it's me to the left, the elephant to the right. So, yeah. Depending, yeah. So you won't, you won't know which one. But preparing yourself for the race, that is very, very, very important as well. Your shore crew, that can be your very, very best friend with, when things get a bit difficult. Your shore crew shall, shall of course, know you and your, your boat and all your limits. How, how far can you go when you're tired? and how hard can you push the boat. It's, it should be like having a coach telling you uh, which sail to put up at the next corner. The shore crew shall keep an eye on the competition for you, and first of all, be a kind of a, a moral backup for you. Um, that's, that's, uh, and also, preparing the race, do read the sailing instructions before the race. Do not be confused about where is the start line, when is my start, and uh, where is the no motor limit, and what's the time frame for it all. You should know that, really. Don't, don't be confused about it, that will ruin your day. So read the sailing instructions. I tend to do so that before the race, I'll take a very, very long walk, and I'll just get my mind focused about 
the course, uh, the weather, the, comf the competition. Really trying to get my mind into a kind of race mode. So, really rethink the whole, the whole weather forecast and think what, what could come here, which, what, what do I have to prepare for? So I, I do all the racing in my head all the way around while spending a few hours walking around. And, and also talking about this getting, uh, getting prepared, I have the retired from, from two silver rudders. That was in 18, that was um, quite a windy one. I got into, uh, by the time I sailed a 45 foot uh, aluminium boat, and um, I came into some hardware issues, and I simply put out before things got out of control. Because sometimes when a minor error can happen, at that time it was my inhaler for the jib, which exploded, and the jib sheet at 30, 40 knots of wind suddenly pressured a lot to the, to the shrouds. I said, this is, this is not going to hold. Then I tried to furl in the jib, I found out that the furling line has jumped off the drum. You know, it's good to have an electric winch. You can fuck up your whole furling system in a second when, uh, the, if you have an electric drum, an electric winch there. So that happened. So I couldn't furl in the jib, and there's a jib with vertical battens, and I say, ah, then I'm going to lower it to the deck. But you have these two and a half meter high battens. You know, they are all over the place like a giant Mikado king. So. I said, when that was done, I said, ah, there's no reason to try to, to uh, put up a smaller jib. I said, this enough is enough. At a, just about the same time, I could see one of my friends in an XP44 hitting the ground hard just to leave out of me. I said, oh, shit, now I'm going home while well, I still have my boat. So, so when errors really, really start to, uh, when, you say, when the shit hits the fan, then you yeah, get, get away from there. Otherwise, it might cost you your boat or anything else. Uh, yeah. So, and always remember, there is, there's always another silver water next year. So, yeah. In 2020, I also uh, retired from the race, and there was some very, very light conditions in, in Lillebelt. Um, and, you know, I, I was at the, at the first bridge as second boat in my class, um, just behind a very good Swedish sailor, Per Svanberg, in his Far East 31. His boat is just a tiny little bit faster than my old Figaro in the light conditions. So he pulled a little bit away from me. We have the, the current against us. I said, OK, that's, that's the way the thing is. He is about far. I'll catch him on later. But he just escaped around the second bridge and the, and the camping place. And he turned, turned left there and I didn't see him. So I was just stuck there at, at anchor with a lot of other boats. Uh, at, and at dawn, I could see that there were boats all over the place. Then, then some person called me and said, shit, this is no good here. There are more than 30 boats have passed you. I said, oh, this, this, is, this is not the moral boost uh, I needed at that point. I, I was sad enough already. But as it turned out, of the 30 boats has passed me, uh, only two were still sailing. The rest of them, they were motoring against Svendborg. So I must say, you, uh, you should be careful about whose advice you take. But be patient with those who supply it. But really, really think hard about, can, can it be true what they're telling you? But your shore crew should know better. But that, if some, some of your old friends, you know, everybody is following the race on the track, uh, and say, well, they will want to help, or they can send you a text message and stuff like that, o only listen to your shore crew, because they, they will be into the matter what you're doing. So. Um, and also, that it seems to be obvious here, but get a good night's sleep before the race. Do not see how many beers you can drink. Not that day. Do not do that. And also, be in a kind of decent shape. And now we come back to this picture here, because, uh, as I said, we are just alike, the elephant and me. That is some way, some years back, uh, this one is taken. It was when I was 49, and I was plus 100 kilos. And I could see this is, not, this is not good, not even for sailing. This is no good. Um, so I started to run a little bit. 
It's a few years later. Uh, this is from Berlin Marathon. Um, so I've, I think I've run 10, 11 marathons. So many half marathons I can't remember, but more than 100. Um, nowadays I run 10 to 20, 30 kilometers a week, do some core training, just to keep a basic kind of shape. And the thing is, this is not because I, I, I need to run on the boat, but being in good shape, it, it, it gives you um, a possibility to, to be sharp for, for a longer time. You are more focused and you can keep, keep awake for longer. You don't get so exhausted. And I must say, I have never been in a situation where I felt I was too strong. Never. So, but, so it's a good thing, be in good shape. I know it's a little bit late, maybe, to come with this right by now, but, but if, if I see someone running out here tomorrow, I know you have listened. Yeah. Uh, what do we have here? That's just about the same. Yeah. And then we have something about routing and planning. That is of course, very important as well. Know which way to go. So, you have to plot the whole course into your Garmin plotter or whatever you have before the start. I do so, I put all my waypoints so I can follow the waypoints all the way around the race course without looking out of the boat. I put them so tight so I'm sure that I'm in normal conditions. I couldn't go tighter around no corner at all, so. And if the conditions get rough, yeah, I might back off a little bit, move further away from the coast. But put them as close as you can. And in a Garmin, you can have a thousand waypoints, but you do not need that for this. But don't, just put in just as many as you need so you can follow the line all the way around the course. So again, when you get tired, you don't have to remove focus from sailing into the navigation, just follow the, pur follow the purple line on your plotter, then you're good. So, and also, you do, do make notes about when the current is going to change, especially here in Svendborg Sun. And also, if you get some from, from Little Belt, put it on a piece of paper, put it on a sticker in your boat, so you know, so you don't have to think about it during the race, you should know that. And you should have, um, uh, oh, just lost it, lost it here. Yeah, yeah, that was about the current. Put, put the labels in there. And yeah, uh, for the weather forecast, uh, I, use, uh, I use Predict Wind. Yeah, well, uh, it's, it's a commercial version, you have to pay for it if you have, want to have the best weather forecast there. And for the current, um, I use uh, the FCOO. The, the links are, are up here. How to, to do it? So go back to that one here. No, sorry, wrong slide. Yeah, no. P put some links on your phone or your iPad or whatever, so you don't have to search for it. So this will just be by hand. So you easily can check the weather forecast doing that, doing the race here. Um, and also, one thing for all of those who are going under the Western Bridge for the, for the low bridge, and this must be most of you. This one here, you can find, it's a public one, it is on my website as well, so you can see the heights here of the bridge. Very, very important. Make a note and say you can go from pillow 21, between 21 and 45 with a security margin. It is so here it notes, uh, I can see this point, how high it is, but in between the pillows there's a bow and it adds at least a meter to the minimum height there. So make those notes so you know exactly. And so you don't have to count and say I can go from pillow 21, I can't sit there. Uh, you know, counting all the pillows. So I have made a note and say I can go seven pillows western of the main fairway, which is here. This is very easy to, to see located on the bridge. So say, I can go seven pillows west of that one. That's my, my minimum. So it makes it easy for yourself. Put a waypoint in there if possible. It can be difficult because on most, uh, most charts, 
you cannot see the supports on the bridge. So you have to do a bit of handwork to put the right waypoint in there. But there's no reason to sail further than that. We all have, have enough. Yeah. And this, uh, this one, this is about the weather again. This is a, a picture here from uh, the top picture is from from PredictWin, and the lower one is uh, from FCOO showing showing the currents. So, and I use some professional software, some uh, some routing software. This is uh, called Adrena, and I just run a, a prognosis. Um, uh, this afternoon with the weather forecast from today to see how fast my alias would uh, go around the course today. And that is one day and 11 hours. So that could be a long race, but average wind, not, uh, wind strength will be 6.9 knots. But um, for sure, this will all change by Friday, I hope, for one doesn't do the worst. So, but out of this arena, you get the you can see up here. I don't know if you can see the red dot here, but that is the uh, average wind strength. The maximum is 18 points something. And up here, you can see wind angle, wind strangers. You get on, on my table here. I can see all which sails I'm supposed to use and what the wind strength, what the boat speed, what everything would be. But it all depends on how precise the weather forecast is. If that's off all those predictions are, are off as well. But it gives you a good, a good estimate what will happen during the race. So. And a little bit about sleep. Uh, I say in, in the very early days of the silver water, it was not so crowded as it is today. My first silver water, I think we were 40 boats. And at that time, we think that was a lot. That was the second silver water. The first one, there was 15. I say, 40? Shit, oh, a lot of people out here. But even then, there was room for taking a small power on airport, the northern part of Fyn. And so. But I would not recommend to do that today. No power naps up there. But during the race, if you feel sure about how far you can go, um, and you say, OK, this is, uh, I have some two, three miles without any obstructions and no boats, and this will be fine. Take a power nap, if possible, just do it. I found out that uh, I can easily uh, take a nap uh, for 15 minutes. I have this uh, Garmin watch on my wrist, and actually it does vibrate on my wrist every 15 minutes during the whole race. And that is to keep me focused. So you know, sometimes if you've gone upwind for two or three hours, you know, you lose concentration and a little bit track of the race, but this one vibrates on my hand every 15 minutes. So every 15 minutes, I'd say, okay, got to look around. Is the sail stream is okay? Is the boat speed okay? Where are the competitions? How is the weather? Is any change ahead? So that it's really good. And for power naps, it works. So I can wake up and take me 30 seconds to look around, and then I go to sleep again for 14 minutes. So that's good. And I found out, by the way, that my personal limit about when I really collapse, that is about 44 hours without sleep. And then I'm tired, very, very, as you can see there, very tired. That was at the end of the Denmark Ground Race, where I've been racing for nearly, yeah, about 40, more than 40 hours. So you can, you can hardly lift your beer after that. You can see, that's in my hand here. So, and again, before the race, get a good night's sleep. Very important. Get up early, get up and be prepared. You should have done all your shopping and everything the day before. There should be absolutely nothing you should do on your boat on Friday morning. And preferable not on Thursday. The boat should be ready by tonight. So you can get into the race mode tomorrow. But I said that before. But also about shopping. Uh, we have something about food. Uh, what I use, I use a little bit of freeze-dried uh, food and pre-made sandwiches and uh, fruit and a little bit of chocolate once in a while. can be nice if you feel sorry for yourself. There's nothing like a bit of candy. Um, 
I do so that uh, I, I boil all the, the water I need before the race. I have a good thermo with one liter, and that's enough for my free dried food. I make the, the coffee and in the small thermos, two, two times half a liter. That should be enough for this race. So I don't have to go, go downstairs to, to waste my time and focus on boiling water. And I do have a little jet boiler in, in spare if, 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 if needed, but yeah, should be fine with those two samples and all. And do so before the race start. I fill all the coffee baths, they are filled up with drinking water and with some easy to grab food so I don't have to go down in the boat at least for the first five or six hours. There's no reason to do that, not at all. And also about calories. Uh, this is absolutely no good. Don't, don't fill yourself off with, with the easy, those easy calories. They will just hurt your stomach after a day or two. And for power drinks or so, I, I really don't use them until you can smell the finish line. Then it's okay. If you feel really tired when you have 10, 15 miles to go, then it's okay to take a Red Bull or whatever. But it's no good if you do it before that. It's a personal choice, but I, I, I simply can't do it. I can't stay focused much longer after the, the, the effect of the Red Bull runs out. I just get so confused. So it doesn't help to take another one. So. Oops, what did we get here? Boom. And about security. Basically, all you need, that is to stay on board and keep your boat watertight. Then nothing can actually happen to you. And the best thing for, for staying on board, that is some, some good shoes. The life vest uh, is only good when it's too late, then you have left the boat. And you should not do that. That is slow. So, the good, good pair of shoes or boots will keep you staying on board. Of course, you, we shall all wear the life vest because it, uh, it, uh, it's good for, so you can get picked up. And, and of course, because it's mandatory. Also, the lifelines, they're good. If it gets really rough, it can be good to be hooked on. But as I personally, I do it very, very rarely. Because it sometimes it makes it too slow to move forth and back in the boat, and yeah, you spend more time out there and at more risk at the foredeck. So that, yeah. but but always only at only hook in to the lifelines, not to the to to the guard lines outside the boat. Do not do that. And I have a, a, a fixing point in the middle of the cockpit of my boat. So it, when it gets really rough, I take the short lifeline and hook that into the middle of the cockpit so no matter which way the bow flips over I will stay inside the boat. So that's also quite good security but I've never seen so rough conditions here so that is neat. I've seen it some few times in my demo ground race and you feel very secure at that point so you're hooked into the boat so even if it make a Chinese jive or whatever you can you will still be in the cockpit. So and should it ever happen that you leave the boat uh, this is uh, an AIS transponder and APIP. That is cool. Then all, all the rest of us can see you on our chart plotters and go and pick you up. So, so that is that's a good thing. You can put it inside your, your life vest so it, actively, uh, it activates by itself. Um, so put one of those in. And for, for how, how uh, up in wind strings, we go while racing. I say I, I, I stop racing at 30 knots. Then I just go sailing instead of. But I put, simply take back off on the pressure of the boat. No spinnaker, not by purpose at least, at, at 30 knots. And we really take security to a higher level when wind strings comes above above 30. Then it's more important to get safe around the course than get fast around the course. Um, and see this this picture here that is from a uh, Denmark round race in my Figaro. It's just in between Anholt and Helsinger. And at that time here, you can see the wind speed up here that is just about 30 knots or so. And at that point, the boat are going with a small jib and one reef in the main, about 13, 14 knots. 
a few hours later, I was going 20 knots with the same sails up. That was, uh, uh, that was why I clipped on to the, to the center of the cockpit and said, this is, this is rough. So, and always, uh, uh, yeah. Always I do have a small torch, a small light in my pocket, so I can... Of course, you can, you can use it to, uh, to light up the sails, but if you ever leave the boat, you can use it to call some attention in the night. So that's a good point of security as well. So. And talking about lights, I have um, on my new boat uh, installed a small searchlight underneath the boat switch. It lights up with 1,500 lumens and just a white light uh, pointing forwards with a, a broad beam. So I can, when I go in the narrow channels in Svendborg Sun, and two weeks ago I was at Rudkøbing in the channel there at Master, I can see all the boys at night don't have to uh, spend uh, energy in one hand with holding a light. You have enough to do just raising your boat. And this small searchlight there, that can be, I can turn it off and off, from, on and off from the cockpit. And that is really extremely helpful. So also when getting into the harbor at the night, you know, it lights up everything for you. So, and you don't get blinded by the lights when it's underneath the bowsprit. That's a very, very cool th thing to do. Yep. And what else do we have to say yeah, about this silver water challenge here? I think the first thing you have to get your mind around, what is really your goal for, uh, for being here? You should, be, you should be a bit humble about uh, what, what your goal is. Are you going to win your class or do you just want to get around the course or do you want to beat all the other five Comfortina 32s or is the local friend from your sailing club your main, your, your main competitor? Get, get a focus around that. What, what are we here for? What, what would be your success rate for getting around this court? Um, and, and don't be disappointed if you don't succeed. It is so, if, if, you don't, if you don't have fun doing the race here, I think you've done something wrong. It should be fun at all times even if you're not winning. It is actually compared a little bit to, uh, to a marathon. You say you go for the Copenhagen Marathon, there are about 10,000 runners in there, but there's only a handful who has a chance to win the race. All the other guys, they're just there to compete against themselves, to get a good day on the streets. And you'll be here also to get a good day on the water on Friday. That is, I think, should be your main purpose. And if you can win, It'll just be even better then. So, yeah. Um, and here we have what we could go for. This is the uh, record holders from the 2020. I think we are more from there, but there was a very fast condition for 21. I think maybe 21, yeah. So, this is it. This is what you could go for. And before I have my, my final slides, I would like if, if anyone has any questions for, you, for me, feel free to ask, or you can take grab on me later on, if, if so. No. So now I've given you a lot of advices. Uh, some you can, might, you can maybe use some of them, maybe not, I don't know. But for the final one here, trust me, Wear sunscreen. <laughs> well, thanks very much, Jan. Thank you very much for coming, and uh, thank you very much to Garmin once again for making this possible. And thanks to all of you for coming and enjoying this uh, presentation by what is definitely one of Denmark's absolute most, uh, most renowned and successful single-handed sailors. Um, are you sure you don't have any questions for Jan? This is a unique opportunity to ask him anything you might like to know. What type of sunscreen, for example? Good, good, yeah, it's a good question, yeah, 
for, for the silver water here, I only use it to get a rough guess about how long it will take. I, I don't use it for routing. I use it for longer races, but not in here. It makes no sense at all because we are so close to land. So, good question. Yeah, all the way around. <laughs> but, but you have to be more focused, especially at Little Belt. That, will, that, will, that can decide the race in there. be sharp. You can you can lose hours there if you're not. Especially because if it, it tends to be we, we will always be there at night time and there's absolutely no wind in there. If the if the current is with us then you will just drift through and probably not lose that much or gain that much. But if in in the counter current you can you can make all the difference of the race. And also when we get back to Sven Bosson you really have to be sharp there. And then most of us are tired there. But just have to keep focus. Trust your navigation. Trust your boat speed. I was saying that we've made a sailing guide, or Jan and Henrik Jørgensen made a sailing guide that we recommend you using. Now, Rune, you asked where should we be specifically uh, concentrated or, or where we should our focus be. The Little Belt and Sven Bosson, um, they've made guides on current, wind, which direction, which part, whether you should stay north or south, depending on the direction of the current. Follow those that are available on the Silver Rudder website. I would definitely recommend that you use them. And there's also a link there that you can see Jan's website yeah, where you can use the guide. It's very useful indeed. Yeah. So, no more questions? No? Okay, you can hit the bar. <laughs> Once again, before you hit the bar, I just have a little bit, just a very, very short message for you. The skipper's meeting tomorrow is at 5 o'clock, 1700, 5 o'clock. I believe some of you may be misinformed that it was at half past 5. And if you do that, you won't get the interesting stuff, like which way we're sailing around. And you'll miss out dinner. So 5 o'clock here tomorrow. Have a fantastic day tomorrow. Enjoy Svenborg, enjoy the weather, and enjoy the company of the Silver Rudder family. Good to see you here.
Hi, this is Philip here at the harbour in Svenborg, two days before the Silver Rudder. Just setting up on the pier here is CERN from Premium Ropes. Welcome, CERN. Thank you. Hi. We're delighted to have you here. Uh, CERN is one of the CERN and Premium Ropes are one of the uh, very latest additions to the uh, whole team of sponsors that really generally support our event. Now, CERN and Premium Ropes have kindly set up on the harbour here. And uh, Sun's perhaps going to tell us a little bit about the services and products that uh, they're going to be offering the 400 sailors that are going to be here for the Silver Rudder. Sun? Yeah, hi. Um, we are at Premium Ropes. We are not only a rope delivery person or a rope manufacturer for you, we also do splicing so that we can make the ropes custom made to the uh, wishes and the requirements that the sailors have. For example, if they need a splice on it, or well, I, I show you here, a certain like attachment on that, make a shackle on it or make a soft lash on it or have a low friction ring on it, then uh, we can also make this happen and so that the sailor can actually use the rope for the purpose that he wants it to. I've brought with me a splicing bench here and it's right mounted in front of the harbour mm -hmm. so everybody can, can get to us here. I have a stack of rope with me and then if you need or if you come for some reason unprepared or have a damage, we will here be here to help you and fit out your boat so Silver Rudder can be a successful challenge for you. Oh, that's great. Thanks, sir. I mean, and sir has got a whole pack of rope in the van that he's brought with him here. So come down to the harbour, check out CERN stuff. I mean, even if you're not actually here to race any of the locals, you know, there are thousands, there are thousands of spectators here yeah. in the next couple of days. Come down and get your, your, your rope needs fulfilled here with CERN from Premium Ropes. Yeah. Thanks a lot for coming, CERN. We yeah, appreciate your partnership. It's a pleasure that's being great. here. So looking forward to meet you all. Thanks.